Welcome everyone to our A to J Author New User Webinar. This is Jessica Frank with the Center for Computer Assisted Legal Instruction. I am A to J Author's Program Manager. Our webinar today is going to cover simple and conditional branching in A to J Author 6. A new thing that I am starting, um, started last month, are tips for authoring. It's things that authors have asked me about or have come up in my email or conversations with authors over the past month, and I thought that they would be helpful to share with you all as, um, as new authors or uh, continuing authors. So the first two I'm going to actually go into A to J author in a second to show you, but the third tip is um, authors have been doing a lot of conversions and converting A to J4 to A to J6, or new authors have been coming on board who are working with um, guided interviews that other people have worked on in the past. So what you might get either from downloading from Law Help Interactive, an existing interview that's live to the public, you go into the contributor portal, you download your existing A to J4, it downloads as a zip file, and you want to update it, and so you have to, and you want to convert it. So you have to take that to a to jauthor.org to upload it to the website and begin the conversion process. In the past, you needed to unzip that file and just um, work with the .a to j file in a to j4. In a to j6, you can take that entire zipped package, which contains your interview. It also contains any external files, so any images, um, any videos, any audio, and any XML list that you had for counties or states in your interview are now able to be imported as a package, and A to J unzips them and puts them in the proper place. So we're making it easier for you as authors to share content with each other, to work on existing guided interviews without having to reattach local files every time you send the interview to somebody else, and we're hoping to make it makes the conversion process easier. This isn't a new thing, but it, um, in terms of A to J6, we, we added this capability early in the summer, but it is um, something that authors ask about when they start working on the conversion process. So um, what I'm going to do now is go into the authoring software itself to show you two features, one of which is new as of um, Monday, and uh, one of which is uh, has been around for a little bit, but you might not have noticed it. So what I'm going to do is just um, go to an interview that I made for today. And the first one is in the About tab. So in the About tab, um, in A to J4, if you haven't been working in A to J6, uh, A to J4 had blank or tan as avatar options for skin tone. Blank was the color of the screen. Tan was uh, roughly between uh, very pale and slightly less pale. Um, so we have, with A to J6, expanded the skin tones. We had one, two, and three. Um, in the code push on Monday, we added two additional skin tones. So these two, we had uh, the first one, the middle one, and the last one. We added these two middle skin tones. We also added the ability for you to change the hair color of the guide avatar. So these are just options for you as an author to present your guide how you'd like the guide to look. So it's very simple. Um, whatever, if you have an existing interview, it'll it'll default to whatever the options had been, either blank or tan for the older interviews or one of the three skin tones um, if you have an existing A to J5 or 6 interview. But you can change them here in the About tab. Changing skin tone, if you watch the avatar standing here on the right, she'll change skin tones in real time. And you can also change hair color if you like as well. And no hair if you wanted. Um, and you can change the gender of the guide avatar as well, along with skin tone. So this just gives you a little bit more customization and lets you see real time what your guide avatar will look like. This does not affect the user's avatar. If you were here last month for our webinar, I showed you some sample avatars um, and ways of asking people to pick an avatar that we're thinking of, but those have not been implemented in the code yet. I see I have a question. <laughs> a question asking if we have added a bling package or jewelry or wardrobe. No, right now we had our designer only work on hair color and skin tone, but we know that's a feature request that you've asked for, Rochelle. Um, 
but this just gives you a little bit more option if you want uh, to have an older looking guide avatar or any skin tone range, um, it gives you a little bit more options. The other new tip is the files tab. This didn't exist in A to J4, so if you've worked in it before, you might not recognize this. This is seeing all of the files that are currently attached to your interview. So if you have images in your Learn More, if you have XML lists for counties or states, if you have a video or audio clips, those will all be included here. And on this page, you can delete any files that you no longer need. So some of the problems that I've heard of with converting old A to J4s or working with files that weren't yours originally is that people have uh, basically messy files. There's a lot of things in there you don't need. Um, and so people are asking for the ability to clean it up easily without downloading it, unzipping it, deleting it locally, rezipping it, re-uploading it. So this way just lets you delete any of the files that you or anyone else has attached to the interview. You'll notice that the first two lines don't have these little boxes. These are little check boxes. That's because guide.json and guide.xml are the two files that run your interview. Guide.xml is what runs your interview in author. Guide.json is, is what is used by the A to J viewer to play your interview um, for the end users. So we don't allow you to delete those because those are intrinsic to um, your guided interview. But anything that you have attached, you can delete. So simply check the box that you want to delete this one. Click delete check. It sends up a warning because you are permanently deleting this from your A to J guided interview file. So please be careful that you are not deleting things that you cannot replicate later if you need them. So it's asking if I want to delete. When I say yes, that I want to delete it, it deletes it. And now I only have the two guide files and the one JPEG that I want to keep. So those are two examples of things that are new-ish in A to J Author that I wanted to point out. If we go back to our presentation, on our agenda today for simple and conditional branching, we're going to talk then about what branching means. What does it even mean to branch someone in an interview? And we'll talk about simple branching and conditional branching and then additional resources and time for questions if you have any. So what is branching? Branching is simply the ability to move your end user through a particular line of questions or to avoid particular questions according to answers they've given you. Example, is the end user married? If yes, you take them to questions about their spouse. If no, they never have to be asked those questions and you can save them that amount of time. It's very simple if you think of a tree or a map or a fork in the road, you can take somebody down different paths depending on what they need to get out of the interview ultimately. Branching is really one of the key features of A to J Author. It's that process mapping. It is um, that overall ability to help end users avoid answers that are irrelevant or to avoid answering questions that are irrelevant to them. And it allows you to create that one interview that can handle multiple situations. So perhaps you have a court form that uh, people with children or without children can use, who are married or aren't married, and they have to answer different sections. You can guide your end user down the appropriate path and save them time. It also makes information gathering clear and efficient. You're not asking them questions that would be confusing because they're not relevant. And you present each end user with a tailored interview. Simple branching is done by buttons. Every question has to have at least one button because it moves the end user. That's how you move them to the next question. Simple branching, you have the two buttons, for example, in the screenshot, are you married? Yes, no. Yes is gonna take you on, down one path. No is going to take you down another path. It's done on the question design window. Question design window is where at the top you author the text and add the learn more. In the middle section, you do the fields and add ways that the end user can, you can get information out of them. You scroll down to the button section, and that's how you handle branching. If we look at this button section, in this top left corner, you can add and delete buttons. You can tell A to J how many buttons that you want. You can have a maximum of three, minimum of one. You can change the label of the button. That's what appears on the button itself that the end user clicks. 
when the end user clicks a button, you can have it assign a value to a variable. So on this last example, are you married? I could have a variable sitting behind yes, that's called married TF, and if they click it, then I'm gonna assign a value of true. If they click no, I'm going to assign a value of false to that same variable. So it's a way to get information out of an end user that's actually going to be used um, in the form and also to move them through the interview. The destination question is where you tell A to J to go next when they click the button, and we'll look at that a little bit closer. And then repeating options are these last two options. Um, we're not gonna really talk about them today, but they are used when you're doing a repeat loop. We just covered repeat loops in, um, I think last month's training. So if you wanna go back and check out that video on our YouTube channel, you can. So with simple branching, each question can contain up to three buttons and you can label them whatever you want. It doesn't have to be yes, no, or continue. It can be something like yes, no, not sure. Each button can send an end user to a different destination. So what this screenshot is showing you is two buttons. The first one being that yes one, and it's gonna go to one dash introduction. The no button is gonna go to two dash name. So they go separate places. And then when you click on this set destination button, it pops up a list of all your existing questions in your interview plus a section called special branching. Special branching is taking the end user to specific points in A to J. They're um, like success process form. That's the very last button when you wanna send your answers either on to LHI or if you're self-hosting into your case management system or send them into the document assembly processing tool that's built into A to J. It, that's how you get your end user to, out of the interview to the next point in which they'll either get their document or move on to some other system out of A to J. There's also exit, save, and resume. That's the way that you send an end user to um, LHI where they can create an account and save their answers and come back later and finish their interview. And there's a couple other special branching options that you can look at when you're authoring in A to J. This is what it looks like on the map. So um, our map, oh, excuse me, our map in A to J6 is not as robust as it was in A to J4, and we know that, um, and we're th working on ways in which our map can be more robust. Um, that was one of the benefits of Flash in A to J4. It had a really beautiful map, um, but this simple map in A to J kind of shows you how branching works. So you'll see with each question they start, and they progress on, follow the arrows. Sorry, the uh, slide controls pop up here, but if you follow this control back up, it takes you to the do you have any, or to, are you pregnant? Then are you pregnant takes you, do you have any children? How many? A job, you can see it just as branching if you follow um, the different arrows. So this is a way to see the forest for your trees. While you're working on your interview, you're kind of focused on one question at a time. This lets you see the bigger picture. The next uh, topic to talk about today is conditional branching. Conditional branching is using advanced logic, using conditions to direct your end user based on inputs they've given you. So it's more than just a simple button where they move forward. This is gonna might take them out of that button path to a different place based on some answer they've given you. The screenshot here is an example of after logic. So it's after they hit the button, they enter some information, they hit a continue button or a next question button. The logic runs then that if income NU, so whatever they've told me their income is, is greater than 25,000 and it's less than 40,000, I wanna take them to a question that's called uh, five dash deductions. So for example, your income level for helping uh, your legal services organization, your minimum income or the maximum income that you can help someone with is 35,000. But there might be some deductions that you can ask people about if they're under, if they're in the 40,000 to $35,000 range that might help them get under that income limit. Um, and so you can have, if they're in that middle range between 25 and 40, you can go to a subsequent follow-up question 
that asks them about deductions, number of people in their home, bills they may have, any follow-up that can be used to knock down their income. But if they're over 40,000, you could take them to a page that says something like, sorry, you don't qualify for our services, here is uh, law help, whatever state, um, you may be able to find additional resources there. So this is doing tests on answers that the end user has given you and then branching them accordingly. This is a screenshot of um, the interview that I created that shows you a couple of different ways you can branch uh, conditionally. So if they tell you they're female, take them to the are you pregnant question. If their income is between the 25 and 40, branch them accordingly. If the number of people in their households is greater than two, go somewhere else. Let me move my mouse so you can see that. Otherwise, go to the don't qualify. So those are all different ways that you can add conditions that evaluate the data entered by the end user. And each condition is gonna determine which destination question to send the end user to. If, all, if you have a test, a condition, that fails and there's no go-to for that, A to J will default to wherever the button told them they should have gone. So um, for example, this top one, if user gender is female, go to are you pregnant? If user gender was male, this condition would fail. So A to J wouldn't do anything, it would branch the end user according to the buttons onto the next question that the author had set. Couple additional resources to talk about. We have our YouTube channel that I've mentioned, youtube.com slash author, and that new four part training video series that I just finished uh, last week. It was based on a live or an online training series that um, LHI Capstone and the A to J author team put on um, for people to learn how to use both our software tools. Um, and so the four part video on A to J is up on our YouTube channel. The hot docs portion is on the pro bono net uh, DA support website. We also have our authoring guide. If you're new to authoring, you can go to our website, uh, adagiauthor.org, and click on the learn tab, and it will take you right into the authoring guide. Otherwise, you could follow the URL here. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to email me, jessica at cali.org. The last webinar of our 2017 series is next month, December 7th. Our webinars restart in February of 2018, and I encourage you all to uh, think about, if you're new to authoring, attending a two-day A to J author and hot docs training series that the LHI Capstone and A to J team put on that is before the TIG conference in New Orleans this uh, next year, January 8th and 9th of 2018. So keep an eye out on the um, document assembly listserv from LHI and the LSN tab Google group for announcements of how to register on that. So if you don't have any questions, um, thank you all for attending and I will see you all next month. Um, question was if the New Orleans training was available virtually. No, this one is uh, a two day intensive training where you have to be in person at the conference. Um, it's usually put on because it's fairly easy for um, people to get, if they're already going to the TIG conference, to get an extra two days. It's really only uh, two extra nights at the hotel um, for expenses because the training is free um, for anyone who is LSC funded or hosts on LHI. Um, but the online training it happens in the fall. We just finished it on Tuesday, actually. Um, and so the, our A to J video component is available on our YouTube channel. They're labeled as the Virtual Training 2017, video one, two, three, and four. The hot talks portion of it that Capstone and LHI put on is available at pro bono net slash DA support. And you need um, a password, it's password protected. So if you need access to that, um, you can email me and I'll direct you to the right person. Or you can email Claudia Johnson at Pro Bono Net. She's C Johnson at Pro Bono .net. She manages LHI and she can give you access to that. All right. Thank you all for attending and I will see you all in December.